ho 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 and welcome to day 24 here on TriHack Movie. We are going to tackle the task called, well, Digital Forensics I guess it is, day 24. We're going to talk about the program called Autopsy, which is the program used to investigate a digital forensics evidence part. So luckily I took a course in digital forensics some years ago at SANS. Um, and I did come across autopsy. In this particular case, all of this tutorial you read is just talking about how they acquired the actual digital artifact or the evidence piece. So you're going to investigate now in autopsy. So read the things, understand how they acquired it, but we already have it. So go to the open case and click it. And I think in the documents and trace MacReady, you're gonna see the trace MacReady autopsy file which is also pretty large. I think it's six gigabytes. Let's just open this. Now I went ahead and opened the um, split window uh, instead of having it in a half window. You can do that as well. And I cannot zoom on the actual program, so it's difficult for me to make it larger. So you have to trust me on what I say and you have to probably look at where my cursor is. That should probably help you a bit. Now, I also want to say that I really hope that you had a really nice 24th December. If you are already celebrating Christmas and doing stuff today, eating great dinner, it may be even opening presents, I really hope you had a good one. So, I just opened mine and I just found a small amount of time where I could create this video for you guys. So, that's why I'm a bit late and really hope that you like the video. Alright, so while the program is waiting to open, it's open already. We can go ahead and check out. We got the data sources right there. We got the file views. We got file types, data artifacts, and so on and so on. Now it's going to take a while. It's a bit of brick program. So what we could do in theory is that we can go in and check out what can we find. We're going to look for a photo. So the photo containing a flag. They do give us a hint to go like file view, file extension, x file extension, so file view, file types, and so on. So we have to say file view, file types. It, it's thinking every time I click it. So I'm opening the file types, pretty easy, and then by extension, there we go. And you say images. Now, there we have the images 156 different kind of images we're gonna see right here. Now, we could look at it in the way it's presented, just in a smaller time. We can also go to thumbnails, which is probably the better way for you to experience the images. They are at the moment in the size of medium, so probably need to make them larger because they are pretty small. Now, I'm going to let the screen load before I do anything and just see if we see something. We see some boards and stuff. And we're gonna find some flags. I'm pretty sure the flag we're gonna look for is pretty obvious, I guess. Um, so let's try if we can go down just a tad. You know, when programs are acting this slow, you are better off maybe just scrolling one time. I think this looks weird, you know. So double click the image. I just click it, it is. Can I please make this larger? There we go. And you probably noticed that we already have a flag. It says try hack me digital forensics. Let's go ahead and type it out. Try hack me. And then digital forensics. Paste it in. Boom, we're done. What name does Tracy use to save Detective Frost's phone number? Alright, so there are probably many ways you can do that, but there is something called contacts over. Let's click that. And in the contact list, you see stuff like <laughs> there's one called Detective Carrick knows. Um, it could be so Detective Carrot knows. All right, so it's a silly one. I'm pretty sure that there was also another way to find it. You could probably go and check out whether there are other uh, evidence you could find, but you know, in this particular case, I figured it would be this name because it sounds weird. So one SMS exchange with Wenspring will contain a password. Okay, so 
Um, we've got something called messages right there. And we can see that the text is over here at the text area. I know this is pretty small. I uh, really cannot do much about it. But if we look, it does say something like password right there. Okay, I will save it for you. And then there is something weird looking that looks like a password. Well, click it once. And down here below, you can copy paste it. I think so, you can copy paste it right back and forth here. There we go. So, okay, so did, this might seem a bit like click, 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 you're done. Well, yeah, Autopsy is a great tool. Uh, it's a tool that can investigate a digital forensics artifact, which is the name for it. The way you can acquire a digital forensic artifact can be either by live acquisition or by passive acquisition where you have the actual shutdown pa pa uh, hardware. But it's, what we really do not want is live acquisition in most cases because the, the processes and other things while we're doing the actual acquisition of the data can be altered. Well, basically I'm gonna say, make the acquisition, make the artifact, use autopsy. There are other great tools you can use to do digital forensics. And it's a very interesting topic. So I really hope you liked this video doing digital forensics. So I just basically wanna say thank you for following along on the 24 days here on my channel. I really try to do my best to great create the best content. Sometimes my time is small, sometimes my t time is better. Today is going to be a small video. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I'm going to see you in the new year. I'm going to create some more videos before New Year. I really hope you have a nice day. So, see you again online and until next time. <laughs>